Well, we've got a lot of operators to cover today. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Mediocre Arknights Operator Guide featuring every obtainable 3-star in the game. And if Hypergriff decides to add more, then this guide suddenly becomes outdated. Each 3-star is overviewed in brief because otherwise we'd be here until next year. Strap yourself in, this guide is going to be mediocre. Every 3-star operator serves as a basic version of the respective subclass with mild variation and only upgradable to Elite 1 level 55. They're cheap on resources to upgrade and are great for early game accounts and fulfilling niches outside of normal play such as the integrated strategies and stationary security service game modes, where many of them are actually quite viable despite your account eventually having higher rarity operators later on. Additionally, every 3 stars deployment cost is less than their higher rarity counterparts, which can help if you're a bit tight on DP. We're starting with Fang, blocks two enemy units and is slightly cheaper to deploy due to her talents reducing her deployment cost by one. Fang is the most durable out of the three star vanguard, specializing in having higher than average defense via her trust bonus and fourth potential. Skill one, or the only skill, cause three stars, gives you six DP. That's it, plain and simple. This operator mostly blocks enemies and generates DP because Fang does less damage than you think. Vanilla is the same subclass as Fang, but instead of being more defensive, Vanilla lies on the offensive side of things. More attack with the fourth potential potential, trust bonus, her talent, and even her skill which increases it by up to another 35% while generating 6 DP. The skill does have a 10 second skill duration and when combined with the SP cost generates less DP on average than Fang, which is something you usually want Vanguards generating more of, but hey, at least she adopted that slug that one time or something. Plume is next, Burp Knight's representative and the Charger subclass. You get her DP cost fully refunded when you, the player, retreat her, and DP is generated by Plume dealing the final blow on enemies. With that in mind, here's a very basic tip, try your best to not have your other operator steal her kills, otherwise, you know, you don't get DP. Luckily, Plume does gain more offense with her talent and skill, even gaining an attack speed boost to increase those killing hit chances. Hi Beagle! She actually gets quite a unique skill set. Her third potential gives defense, the trust bonus gives her defense, her talent gives defense, and the best part, the skill grants an additional 50% defense. The mass defense stacking does allow Beagle to take hard-hitting physical enemies, which is what you should probably expect out of a defender. If you don't like the glasses, she's got a cool Bloodline of Combat skin. Cardigan is a slightly different type of defender. Instead of stacking up a lot of defense, it's maximum health instead. Extra health from the usual areas, totaling up to not quite 3000 HP, but pretty close. All except Cardigan's skill, which restores 40% of her total HP, and with the short 20 SP skill cost, she becomes somewhat self-sustaining. Depending on the situation, Cardigan can be the better defender option. Spot, the first must build 3 star of the video for one main reason, the Guardian Defender. He fulfills multiple roles in one operator and at the cost of not being able to attack, he heals with his skill giving a temporary dodge chance to those healed, and blocks 3 enemies because defender. Place him in the front to hold the line, behind other operators as a pseudo healer, or even in the middle of nowhere to bait ranged attacks. He's also very useful in integrated strategies because for some reason I never get medic recruitment vouchers and I get really salty about it sometimes. RNG, you can fuck. Stewart is a caster, dealing arts damage by default, but what's cool about him is his talent. In addition to the attack boost, he specifically targets the enemies with the highest defense stat in range. Useful because many high defense enemies usually are paired with low arts resistance. Not all of them, but a good chunk of them, maximizing how much damage Stewart deals. As a result, he might not target the enemy slipping past your defenses. Skills as standard as the rest, deals more damage on the next hit, he's an efficient, damaging caster. But if you need exclusively area of effect arts damage instead, Lava has you covered. If you need anything else, you're probably looking at the wrong operator. On deployment, she gains almost all the SP cost for her skill, which raises attack speed by a decent amount. With that in mind, you could in theory use her as an expensive redeploy operator. Drop, skill, finish, retreat, perhaps put in some other operator to stand in, that's just a random thought. You probably just want to use her as a normal AoE caster most of the time. I can't really form a proper opinion here simply because I'm bored and want something to do. But I heard my sworn nemesis is here too though. She is here, and it's Hibiscus the basic medic of the roster, does healing things. There's not much I can add to this because that's all she does. Her talent, extra bonuses, and skill adds to the healing amount. If you need a medic, there you go. At least Hibiscus is optimistic about it all. Next up is Ansel and is widely considered a fantastic 3-star medic. With every heal, there is up to an 18% chance to heal a second target at the same time. Combine that with a skill that busts up attack and an extended attack range makes her a solid medic. I mean, what? Orchid, the only supporter in this video, does arts damage, slows on hit, 
has a slightly faster attack speed by default. Skill makes her hit harder and more often effectively slowing more. That's it, next one! Another popular must build 3 star is Melentha, an operator with the highest attack stat out of all the 3 stars. Third potential, trust bonus, skill, base attack, there's a lot to it. Use her as a normal dreadnought guard or taking advantage of her cheap 3 star cost you can drop, kill and retreat. Useful in general. Poppy Car has sort of been cucked by her subclass, the Centurion. 3 star blaze, 3 star spectre, not really. If you don't already know, Centurion guards go from 2 to 3 block when they're promoted to Elite 2, which 3 stars can't get to. The difference is pretty noticeable, especially if you're playing something like Integrated Strategies where you can have Elite 1 Centurions. At least Poppycar's health and attack buff from her talent are quite generous, and a 50% attack buff from her skill can help cut down enemies before more come and overwhelm that block count. Despite that low number, she'll do just fine. Now for the Edgelord, I mean Midnight. Darker than the night, one with the shadows, also blessed with the Lord subclass. With a nice range for a melee unit, he can hit both ground and air targets while being able to swap the arc damage with his skill. As a bonus, his talent gives Midnight a chance to deal extra damage. Though the skill does last for up to 40 seconds, that 70 SP skill cost does sometimes cause you to hold off on using the skill, wondering if it's worth activating it at that particular point. But despite that, he's quite flexible. Cruz is the last of the muscle 3 stars of the video. Similar to Midnight, her talent gives a chance to do more damage, otherwise known as a cruise crit. But she also has a skill that makes her next attack do more damage and hit twice. The revelation? Both damage modifiers stack for even more damage. With the faster attack speed marksman snipers get, these crits will be happening more than you think, whether from the skill or the talent procs, or both on the same hit. And because you will all likely riot in the comments if I don't reference it at least once, <clears throat> Koko da yo. Time for Adnakiel. I never learned how to pronounce this guy's name until his English voice lines came out. His talent is sort of like Stewart's, but instead of targeting the enemy with the highest defense, it targets enemies that attack from range. And with many ranged enemies having less defense, Adnakiel's attacks are more efficient in a sort of inverted way compared to Stewart. The bonus 8 attack speed from the talent and basic attack boost from his skill is nice too for a faster killing. Last but not least, we have Catapult, the Artilleryman Sniper. Similar to Poppy Car, she has been slightly neutered by her subclass because Artillerymen do not get their full attack range until they're promoted to Elite 2, missing those outer corner tiles. Catapult capitalizes on the 3 star's lower deployment cost and decreasing it by a further 1 with her talent. She doesn't really get attack buffs, but the pro of being able to hit more potential targets with her skill. It makes Catapult an operator that can be deployed fast and acts as a larger area of effect attacker. So, should you build every 3 star? Um, probably not. If you do want to know exactly which one to build, I've compiled a list of who I've personally found to be useful. Take it with a grain of salt, if you specifically need that operator, you should probably build them. It's all divided into sections for what you may want to use them for. Have a look while I say nothing useful until enough time has elapsed for you to check out a scuffed player's opinion. Or you know, you could just pause the video. And for those that did pause before this moment, um, hello there. How's life? How's your day been? And that was the Every 3 Star Operator Guide. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.